Gentlemen, welcome to Moray House. This evening, we celebrate the life of Dr. Walter Rodney on this, the 36th year of his death. This evening, Walter Rodney's colleagues, friends, those closest to him, and a younger generation influenced by him will be his voice, if only for a moment. Walter Rodney posed key questions of Guyana in his life, and his scholarship, as well as in the manner of his death. There have been and continue to be parallel narratives about his death. These are apt to obscure the equally important questions raised by his work and his legacy. There is a social as well as a political dimension to his legacy. He challenged us to reinvent our human relationships as well as our political ones. We should not forget this. Thank you. I was interested in this, in this uh, piece because it presents not just race and not just the importance and the, the uh, tragedy of race in Guyana, but also points to the importance of class. And it also speaks to, um, I guess, Walter's praxis, which was not a static, ossified praxis. He looked very specifically at what was happening around him at the time it was happening around him, as opposed to importing and bringing um, impulses and analyses from elsewhere. So I will read from the politicization of race in Guyana. I grew up in a divided society in which the majority of one's day-to-day -day contacts were with one's own ethnic group. So there was a certain isolation, but I didn't regard it as a condition of hostility. I interrelated with Indians at school, etc. There were just other Guyanese. When I wrote The Groundings with my brothers, I referred back to the Guyanese, African, and Indian situation, trying to make it clear that the way in which one was using the word black in West Indian context must of necessity embrace the majority of African and the Indian population because I knew that the word black could well be interpreted in a narrow sense to mean only African and hence anti-Indian. Because when, when Walter Rodney came in 1974, it was 10 years after a new government, the, the excitement about independence, um, and, and republicanism was, 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 was very prevalent in the, in the society. The government of the day had introduced some social reforms which um, did have some effect on, on, on poor people. But um, as, as is the case with our Caribbean political praxis, going hand in hand with reform and, and progressive policy, uh, both at home and, and progressive foreign policy, was uh, 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 the, the slippage into um, a deeper authoritarian context. And so um, we have to contend with that. And I think Walter Rodney brought that out. Uh, um, the, the, the limits of social reform and progressive foreign policy within the context of an authoritarian system. For me, that's the, that's the fundamental question that he raised. And so he was able to do some things that... Um, we would think un unthinkable today, and I I'll quickly say, say them. One, here is someone who came to Guyana with a reputation as a Pan-Africanist, as a black nationalist. That was clear. Sometimes people would have us believe he, Walter Rodney was not into that kind of thing. But that was, that was what Grounding with my brothers was about and so on. But here is this person with this reputation coming to Guyana and, and, and speaking to the opposite ethnic group um, and is able to go further than um, any of the political activists have gone before him. And I think it has to be something about what he was saying and how he was saying, but more than that, a reading of the political moment, and Karen referred to his concreteness. He didn't come to Guyana and put his fist in the air and say black power. He said that before, 
all right? He came to Guyana and looked at the Guyana situation and decided that um, there, there, there has to be another approach. And he was successful in doing that. Um, the other thing he was successful in doing was there was an African, in the context of what he was talking about, both ethnic groups going their own way, here was this person who was an African challenging an African-led government, right? And, and, and moving into places like Linden and Buxton and Georgetown and speaking to African people and getting them to listen to him. And more than listening, um, um, uh, 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 becoming part of the movement. Those two things, I think, happening at the same time is what plants Walter Rodney so solidly in the transformational praxis of Guyana. Um, and, and, and the third thing um, he was able to do was to reignite, to reignite the value of protest and resistance, the value of protest and resistance, so that he was making the point about struggle, and he was not talking, as he would say, and I quote, not a theoretical struggle, not an hypothetical struggle, but a struggle in motion, all right? Um, and I think, insofar as today we still have a protest movement, a resistance movement, we still have people in the society, young people and others, asking questions of the society. I think it has a lot to do with the space Walter Rodney opened up for that kind um, of, 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 of resistance. So when I talk about political... His philosophy on leadership. Rodney believed that a leader must lead by example and must be prepared to do anything he asked others to do. This was an important tenet of his political philosophy. And here he separated himself from the conventional political leaders. In my view, it is this aspect of his political culture that played a major role in his extraordinary ability to get comrades to take on almost any task.